Today we are going to discuss the DNA extraction from onions with the help of the phenol chloroform method and it is also known as the HDS method with the help of the detergent HDS or the chemical compound HDS we are going to extract the DNA from the onion so here why we are using onion it is because it is going to have very low starch content in onion which allows the DNA to be seen clearly it means that to extract the DNA from the onion is very easy compared to the any other specimen which is used because onion is going to have low starch or low carbohydrate content in the next slide we are observing reagents required so here the reagents required are homo homogenizing solution phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol mixture chloroform isoamyl alcohol mixture and ice cold or ethanol and lysis buffer or te buffer and standard saline citrate now here you can see that how we are preparing the homogenization solution that is 5% sodium dodecyl sulfate that is the HDS and it is also called as the sodium lauryl sulfate where we are going to estimate to 50 grams per liter for 5% if it is 10% we are going to take 100 grams per liter so depending upon the percent of the sodium dodecyl sulfate or the HDS we are preparing according to that we are going to increase by each percent by 10 grams of the HDS here is one more compound that is the sodium chloride at 0.15 molar it is going to be 8.8 .8 grams per liter and 0.15 molar sodium citrate it will be 44.1 grams per liter now here when you are going to consider sodium citrate of 44.1 gram per liter here we have taken dihydrate form of the sodium citrate and here 0 0.001 molar EDTA of 0.372 gram per liter this EDTA is of disodium so the molecular weight changes even in sodium citrate if it is monohydrate the molecular weight is going to change if it is dihydrate the molecular weight is also going to increase if it is trihydrate again it is going to be different so here as we have taken dihydrate sodium citrate it is 44.1 gram per liter so according to the disodium citrate molecular weight the amount of the sodium citrate has been taken now here phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol mixture has to be prepared which is again called to be as the pca mixture of 25 is to 24 is to 1 ratio 25 parts will be of phenol 24 parts will be of chloroform and one part will be of the isoamyl alcohol for instance if you are going to prepare 100 ml of the pca mixture here 20 parts to be of the phenol 48 parts of to be the chloroform and two parts of to be the isoamyl alcohol so here parts equals to the ml so in the same way chloroform isoamyl alcohol ratio is 24 is to 1 here we are excluding the phenol here we are taking chloroform isoamyl alcohol in 24 is to 1 ratio this is called it to be the cia mixture so the typo error has been made here pcl kind but here it is a cia mixture where it is chloroform isoamyl alcohol mixture 24 is to 1 now here you know that absolute alcohol is 100% alcohol either you can take 70% alcohol also 95% alcohol also or 90% alcohol also and absolute alcohol also but it should be of ice cold it means that clearly you have to manage to keep the alcohol in the freezer where it is going to get ice cold further is lysis buffer this lysis buffer is going to have trace SCL and EDTA where it is going to have the pH of 7.8 in homogenization solution also you have to see the pH it should be around 7 to 9 
if it is near to 8 that is in between 7 to 9 if it is near to 8 it is very good if it is lesser or more than 8 it is also good so in this same manner here also lysis stress edt a buffer ph should be 7.8 where it is going to have trace hcl of 0.1 molar 1.58 grams of grams per liter of trace hcl has to be taken and 0.001 m edta molar edt has to be taken that is 3.372 grams per liter of edta has to be taken so with these two components for a liter we are going to mix and we are going to prepare the te buffer or the lysis buffer now again we should have standard saline citrate that is again ssc solution where 0.15 molar NaCl that is 8.8 .8 grams per liter sodium chloride should be taken and 0 0.015 molar sodium citrate that is 44.1 gram per liter has to be taken this this uh, preparation is with this sodium citrate and sodium chloride these two same we are going to take here I will tell why we have to prepare the separate of saline solution behalf of we are taking here now next is the procedure in the procedure we are going to start the procedure with mincing the onion where we are going to mince the onion of 25 grams and further we are going to keep this particular sample under some time for cold condition that is under the freezer or the fridge where we are going to keep it for 5 to 10 minutes because we are going to take the homogenization in the cold condition so here further we are going to add 5 ml of homogenization solution to the 25 grams of the onion sample and after that we are going to grind that sample for 15 minutes in mortar and pizzle and after grinding for 15 minutes we are going to add 5 ml of homogenization solution to that and we are going to keep it for a while so after keeping it for a while we are going to add 5 ml of lysis t buffer lysis buffer solution and vertex it and we are going to vertex it and then we are going to keep this motor in incubator at 65 degrees Celsius if you want to keep the motor itself you can keep else you can take the sample in big test tube according to the volume of the sample grinded and you can keep it in the incubator at 65 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes so here after incubation we are going to centrifuge it at 5000 rpm for 10 minutes with compatible containers either test tubes or fnw tubes if you are going to take the tabletop centrifuges which are which can hold good the test tubes in that centrifuges you can use the test tubes directly where the sample can be put in the test tubes and you can centrifuge at the maximum speed so here depending upon the centrifuge which you are using according to that as per the compatibility of that uh, centrifuge you have to take the containers either f and of tubes or the compatible containers or the small test tubes or the micro test tubes and you can use the sample now here you are going to centrifuge the sample at 5000 rpm now before to this centrifugation we have seen that the sample has been kept for 65 degrees celsius for 20 minutes here the sample has taken part in its maximum reaction with the homogenization solution and also the lysis t buffer solution so the solutions or the buffer which we have added they have reacted with the sample during this centrifugation what will happen the whatever the debris that is the sample debris will be present which is not required for us for the further process 
it is going to settle at the bottom so whatever the lower pellet is going to form after the centrifugation that has to be discarded and further whatever the upper supernatant part which we are going to take that we are going to collect in the other container that is the test tube or the effend of tubes and further to that we are going to add phenol chloroform isomylog alcohol mixture of equal volume whatever the volume you are going to take the supernatant the same amount of the volume we are going to add of the phenol chloroform and isomer alcohol mixture so further we are going to mix well and further we are going to centrifuge at 5000 5000 rpm for 10 minutes here we are going to centrifuge again after centrifugation we are going to get two layers upper layer will be the free supernatant bright layer or the white layer and below layer will be the very aqueous which is going to have phenol chloroform isomyl alcohol so the dense layer which is below that has to be discarded but the supernatant or the upper layer we are going to collect further after that if you are going to see the turbidity in the collected supernatant layer that is the turbidity in the sense if you are going to see the huge whitish whitish form of the uh, turbid within the supernatant layer again you can take the phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol mixture of the same value and you can do the one more repeat of this particular step and after repeating this particular step when you're going to get the supernatant it will be very clear and after that you can take the step further where you can use chloroform isomyl alcohol mixture and further you can do the last process now here when you're going to after doing this last process you are going to collect the supernatant in a clean sterilized test tube and you are going to add double the volume of chilled ethanol now here before to this one i want to add a note to you guys that uh, you are going to add a few drops of the saline sodium citrate saline to the solution before to doing this particular step of adding the ice chilled ethanol here you are going to add the sodium citrate saline because now here when you are going to add ssc a few steps according as corresponding to your particular supernatant amount that if you are going to having a supernatant of 1 ml which you are collected after these two steps of the centrifugation then you should add minimum of the 1 by 4th of the ssc i will speak uh, the what is the use of the ssc in the discussion part after this now here after adding the ssc and mixing it and further you are going to add the chilled ethanol double the volume of the supernatant that is you are going to add the chilled ethanol from the sides of the test tube not directly pouring sides of these test tubes so it is going to slowly going to mix with the whatever the amount of the dna is present and it is going to make it to appear perfectly to our naked eyes so according to or depending upon its particular purity it is going to appear finely to our naked eyes in the glass test tube now here further this step is if you want you can follow if you don't want you can use it in the other way also as per the whatever the facility is available in your labs here in this step take a pasture pipette and heat it with a bunsen burner toward the narrow end until you can bend the end back up towards the top forming a hook now here this hook we have to create with the help of the pasture pipette which will be helpful for to spool out the dna here in our labs during our classes instead of this we used to take a clean sterilized form of the glass rod which is very uh, minimally 
thin and very clean and we are going to dip that glass rod after sterilizing with the ethanol we are going to dip with the within the test tubes and we are going to slowly rotate the glass rod because of that what will happen the dna is going to get swelled or get uh, uh, what you call attached to that glass rod and we are going to remove that glass rod and further we are going to air dry or with paper towel we are going to either air dry it or else we are going to keep it on the paper towel and raise we are going to again resuspend in the te buffer or ssc solutions now here this is the one i want to add orally that uh, these dna molecules may have large amounts of the rna in some labs they will do these procedures to remove this large amount of the rnas where they are going to before suspending to t to the te buffer or to the ssc solution either you can uh, suspend this particular air dried dna or the water or uh, dried with the paper towel dna into te buffer or ssc solution before submitting or subjecting to any kind of the other practical for the dna analysis now here before to that in some labs they think that there will be the large amount of the rnas within the dna which has been extracted so here this rnas has to be removed that it can be removed with the help of the rnas digestion solution that is the enzyme where they are going to use this rnas where one milligram concentration can be used as one milligram per ml now with this by subjecting this dna with rnas the rnas can be dissolved and further those rnas can be removed with the help of the centrifugation and further we can say that it is very pure dna which can be subjected further for the agarose gel electrophoresis now here further coming to the discussion in this before going to the chemical discussion we will discuss here uh, in this uh, procedure when you are going to do the homogenization in homogenization you are going to blend the sample in the homogenizer or motor or bezel depending upon the availability of whatever the facility is in the lab now here when you are going to blend the sample the sample is going to get finely blended or homogenized where the cells are going to break out and during that time breaking of the cells the release of the all cell matter, all cell matters that is the organelles proteins mrnas carbohydrate whatever is present in the cell it is going to get released from it and it is going to get mixed with the whatever the solutions homogenization solutions has been added that the homogenization solution are directly going to react with that particular whatever the proteins lipids and the other carbohydrates which are present within the cells and the rnas dna all this it is going to get reacted with this particular homogenization solution now here when we are going to subject this homogenization solution for t buffer or the lysis buffer here also they are going to get reacted with that particular uh, solutions which has been subjected for a particular purpose now when you are going to put this particular homogenization solution at 65 degrees it is where we are going to keep the homogenization solution for standby at 65 degrees in the incubator where it is going to lead the chemicals to show their maximum action maximum action on the purpose where it has been subjected to for what it has been subjected to so here because of that what will happen the maximum amount of the debris which we have to which we are interested in removing from the except the dna from this particular sample that is going to takes place so here from this step here to here the maximum amount of the debris will be removed now here from this step here centrifugation after this step yeah after this step that is where the pellet will be removed that is the maximum debris is removed after this step we are subjecting 
the sample to remove the maximum amount of the that is the remaining protein the maximum amount of the remaining protein so in this two steps after this in these two steps we are going to remove the maximum amount of the remaining proteins now here after that after these steps you have understood what we have spoken in the procedure now here you can see that first we are going to prepare the sample where we are going to homogenize it and further we are going to lysis it and further we are going to centrifuge to remove the proteins now here after this this is the first centrifugation where we have removed the excess de debris which is not required and also the some amount of the proteins within this centrifugation after this again we are going to centrifuge with these two steps and we are going to remove the protein removal so here we are doing the one two three if you need it this step will be repeated one more time so one two three four four times the centrifugation will be done to remove the maximum amount of the whatever the debris including the proteins will be takes place further is that we are going to take the remaining this open intent to precipitate the dna and further we are going to do the air dry and we are going to further rehydrate that is the with the help of the ta buffer and ssc solution now now here we are going to discuss the significance of the sodium duodecyl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate which is used in the dna extraction it is a strong anionic detergent that is useful for the rapid disruption of biological molecule membranes now here when you are going to con consider disruption of the biological membranes the biological membranes are the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane now when you are going to disrupting a cell membrane or the nuclear membrane the this sds can react both on proteins and also the lipids which is present within the uh, what you call the cell membrane or the biological membrane where it is going to remove the negative ions from the proteins and destroy its conformation by disrupting the non covalent interaction that hold the cell membrane together you know that in cell membrane there will be the integral proteins the proteins which are present in within the cell membrane which is going to keep the structure of the cell membrane at its good hold because of that the cell membrane is going to remain integrated always when it is going to react on this particular proteins these proteins will get emulsified or disrupted because of that, the non covalent interactions is going to happen and it is going to destroy the cell membrane structure so the cell is going to burst open because of the loss of conformation the protein loses its structure the proteins from the cell membrane get damaged and cell gets broken now here the cell is broken this will help the cell membranes and nuclear envelopes to break down and expose the chromosomes that contain the dna now here the dna has been exposed now here directly if you are going to say histones are also form of the proteins where the histones are going to get in or default contact of this particular sodium dodecyl sulfate at to the some extent and they are also going to uh, get into the negative ions uh, removal and because of that there also there the structure is going to lose and because of that the histone proteins is also be removed now when you are going to consider the sds it's a amphipathic detergent which is going to have the hydrophobic tail and water soluble head group now here hydrophobic tail and water soluble head group is nothing but the head is hydrophilic and the tail is the hydrophobic when it is the head is going to come into the contact of the water it is readily soluble within the water but the tail is the hydrophobic tail when it has the cell has been subjected this particular amphipathic molecules of the detergent or the compounds of the detergent are going to form the mesh cells that is the micromolecules they are going to act on this particular membrane protein you can see it's a membrane protein which is going to get 
attached or bound with this particular detergent missiles now here they are going to destructure this particular protein so it is called, called to be as the crystallization so destructurization is going to happen so because of that it is going to take part in the form of the crystallization and also one more thing i want to tell the detergents are very likely to affect the sulfide bonds of the protein so because of that the tertiary or quaternary structures of the proteins are going to get disrupted very easily so here this is what the role of the hds further is the use of the phenol phenol is drip deprotonizing agent now here deprotonizing agent here also you saw hds what is the role it is also deprotonizing it and here also it is the deprotonizing it it is going to remove the protein from the particular phase in the sense because phenol is going to take part in the destructuring of the proteins now here when you are going to consider the cell rupture cell rupture will be having the many forms of the proteins those proteins has to be removed from its particular liquid phase it has to be taken into the uh, very completely into the uh, other phase now when you are going to subject the phenol into this particular into the particular sample which we are going to which we are taken on homogene homogenization the phenol as it is having the high density it is going to take the overall protein which is present within the sample into its particular phase and it is going to deprotonize it it is going to keep it within that particular phase now here what will happen because of that whatever the other phase the supernatant which we are going to get on the centrifugation it is going to have the dna or the nucleic acid when you are going to consider the chloroform chloroform is the one which is again in the form of the deprotonization where it is going to denature the protein but the high end or the high purpose of using the chloroform is to separate the phenol and the upper supernatant phases where chloroform is going to act as to create the two different phases within the centrifuged sample or the container where supernatant will be very free from the phenol and chloroform and isoamyl alcohol where the below layer is the aqueous layer is going to have all the three that is the mixture phenol chloroform and the isoamyl alcohol with the proteins and the other debris which are not necessary within the extraction of the dna now here so here you can see that it is going to form the bottom chloroform layer on centrifugation with phenol it is going to form as we are using this three as the mixture so it is going to take the overall phenol and isomal alcohol together when it has been separated with after the centrifugation now here this below layer is the organic phase which is going to be present which is hydrophobic and heavier resulting in a quick and clear phase separation with the organic phase containing proteins at the bottom now here further why we are using the isoamyl alcohol it helps in reducing foaming now here when you are going to use only phenol chloroform it may uh, you can see that uh, there can be the formation of the foaming within the after the centrifugation because of the foaming it will be very difficult to collect the supernatant as the below organic phase will be having the uh, what called phenol and the uh, chloroform and the supernatant will be having the dna so if there is a foaming the foaming will be having a very disturbed form of the phases because of that there will be very difficult for for collecting the supernatant and to discard the organic phase now when you are going to use isomal alcohol it is going to reduce the maximum amount of the foaming so there will be the very clear phases where the upper aqueous and below organic phases will be formed because of this the 
the isoamyl alcohol will be responsible to give a clear supernatant and the clear organic phase now here when you are going to consider the mixture chloroform isoamyl alcohol this is the mixture that is 24 is to 1 which we are going to use as the final centrifugation here why we are using chloroform is to 1 it is the last attempt to clear the proteins on a doubt that there may be some proteins some more proteins present within the sample which uh, the supernatant which we have collected so here if you are going to use chloroform you are, as we have already discussed that the chloroform is responsible is also responsible for denaturing or deprotonizing the proteins now here present uh, in the sample is going to be removed from this particular chloroform isomer mixture and centrifugation now this is what the particular discussion about this now the main component which we are using here is the edta where the edta is uh, also said to be as the one of the component to break the cells where it is also responsible to break the cell walls the cell walls which is going to chelate the cell walls where it is going to uh, break the cell walls by where it is going to remove the mg2 plus and the calcium present within the cell membranes or the cell walls but here when you are going to consider edta apart from this cell wall breaking the main purpose of the edta is to chelate the calcium and the magnesium present in the dnss and the rnas now here the dnss and the rnas are going to have are going to act as the enzymes which are going to degrade the particular dna and the rna so these enzymes has to be arrested first before they are going to act on the nucleic acids now here when you are going to consider the dnss these dnss will be and the rnss enzymes will be having the metal ions where these are going to form uh, metal ions where these metal ions are going to act as the catalyst for the particular uh, dnss and rnss those metal ions will be magnesium and the calciums within the cells so these metal ions has to be chelated with the help of the edta because of the removing chelating means the removing or arresting or scavenging so here they are going this edt this edta is going to take this particular calcium and the magnesium into its complex so here you can see this is the edta structure where the calcium has got chelated or arrested here the magnesium now here you can see this particular where this because of this what will happen the dna or the rnss are going to remain within the solution unaltered now here further when you are going to consider lysis stress edta buffer this lysis stress edta buffer which will be added after the homogenization even homogenization will be having the edta this edta which we are going to use in the homogenization which will be responsible for the breaking of the cell wall if it is the sample of the plant and also the depending upon the amount of the edta present it will also be responsible for arresting the whatever the metal ions present within that particular cell after the complete homogenization again we are going to use the TE buffer lysis TE buffer that is to again to make sure that the DNA molecule should not be disrupted whatever the amount of the DNSs or RNSs are present so here we are going to add it again to make it sure that whatever the component we are interested in like the DNA or the nucleic acid that has to be remained unaltered so for that we are going to add this tris edta buffer and also re remember using the tris edta buffer should be of the particular ph that is of the 7.8 in some articles or in some labs they will use between 7 to 9 in some labs they will use near to the 7 or some labs they will use 8 
like that depending upon but it is very good if it is according to that uh, near to 8 it will be little above or little lesser 8 pH is very good where it is going to keep uh, the the uh, action of this particular tris HCL and the EDTA very very accurate now because of that what will happen the DNA or the nucleic acids will remain not uh, not denatured now here further is sodium chloride use of the sodium chloride it prevents the denaturation of the DNA and it helps to remove proteins that are bound to the DNA here apart from the uh, other HDS this is also will be helpful to remove the, the proteins uh, attached to the or bounded to the DNA it creeps the proteins dissolved in aqueous layer so they don't precipitate in the alcohol along with the DNA now here when you are going to consider sometimes little amount of the proteins will be present within this particular aqueous layer what we spoken the organic layer the bottom layer the aqueous layer will be the above as we have spoken that we are going to do three to four centrifugations with the help of the mixture and we are going to get the pure aqueous layer so pure aqueous layer sense in that it doesn't mean that it will not have any proteins it will be having the proteins but it will be very 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 mild amount or the less amount so here because of the use of the sodium chloride it is going to keep these proteins bay away from that the genomic dna further is the addition of the sodium citrate or sodium acetate these are the two different components which i have i am discussing in some labs they will use sodium acetate in the place of the sodium citrate so here both are going to act in the same way the dna is temporarily neutralized and then easily dissociated from the water the role is to increase the number of sodium ions in solution to a point used to create a temporary attraction between sodium and the dna phospho backbone now here the meaning of this particular is that this saline solution what we are using let it be the the sodium chloride also let it be the sodium citrate also the use of this sodium in this so that is the main uh, concept here that is the use of this sodium this sodium ions any ions those ions as they are going to increase in their amount within this particular aqueous layer this is going to what do you call it get interacted or attracted to the phospho backbone of the dna because of this what will happen it is going to make the dna stable then uh, where it is not going to lead to the denaturation now here this is uh, going to lead to the dna attraction and the dna phospho backbone because of this sodium citrate or sodium acetate this is what the function of it now again when you are going to add alcohol to the extract of the dna where the dna is going to be dissociated from the water now here the dna is going to get separated from the water where, where we are prepared all the sam chemical samples with distilled water itself here only we are using the what you call the alcohol where we are going to subject the dna into it because of the sodium present and its attraction the dna phospho backbone is going to become stable and after that when we are going to do the alcohol subject chilled alcohol subject the dna is going to get dissociated from water now here and the alcohol forces the dna and sodium ions to become even more tightly bonded now here whatever the temporary attraction has been formed that is going to become more stronger after adding the chilled alcohol let it be of 75 percent let it be of 80 percent 90 percent or absolute alcohol uh, we are using the 95 percent and or the absolute alcohol to get the better results now further use of the ethanol or isopropyl alcohol causes the dna to precipitate you can use any of this now but using the ethanol is good so that uh, you can get the better results compared to other forms now here we have discussed the maximum amount of the points now result is 
we are going to see the white strands of DNA precipitated on and if you are going to subject this particular DNA precipitate on gel bands with smear patterns from high to lower molecular weight range can be seen now here most of the DNA fragments will get accumulated at high molecular weight so here it is not degraded so with if they are with the high molecular grade then it is the not degraded one where the most DNA fragments are small where DNA might have got degraded now with the help of the bands if the band is going to be swabbing with the high molecular weight within the gel electrophoresis then it is considered to be as the not degraded one if they are broken then there appear the fragments going to appear to be as the small one so here it is considered to be as the broken one in the sense the degraded one so if you are going to get the more amount of the dna fragments in the small length as the bands on the gel electrophoresis so then the subjected sample for the dna extraction and the procedure followed has been ignored nor improperly followed if you have followed the procedure very clearly then the dna fragments will be with the high molecular weight where it is not going to show any of the low molecular weight dna fragments now here that is what the procedure what we have discussed till now that is the use of the chemical components in the homogenization again the same chemical components using in the lysis buffer again the same saline solution which has been used in the homogenization solution that is the sodium citrate saline after uh, the centrifugations again we are going to use and uh, we are going to subject the dna where the dna is going to remain intact so all these things we are going we are doing to make sure that dna remains intact and we are going to get the good results when we are going to run the dna profiling that is the gel electrophoresis so this is uh, what the dna extraction procedure here in in place of onion we can use the samples like the goat liver or the coconut or the any plant uh, leaves flowers roots so here you can use any sample but it makes sure that you you are going to change the concentrations according to the material you are using if you are going to use the animal tissues the concentrations of the molarity has to change so the molarity is going to change uh, for example at the place of the 5% of sodium dodecyl sulfate you are going to use 10% 15% and the molarity of sodium chloride can be of 0.5 it can be of uh, sodium citrate 0.5 for a molarity EDTA can be of the 0 0.01 like this you are going to change the molarity of this particular components so here once you are going to change the molarity in this homogenization the same molarity you are going to use in the tris EDT buffers also and here also but the phenol chloroform isomyl alcohol mixtures are going to remain the same in the ratio and the absolute is called ethanol is going to say going to remain the same so this is how the sts uh, method of dna extraction has been done so it is uh, definitely is going to give, give the good results and i hope i have given the good information on this particular dna extraction and uh, the discussion itself stands for the principle so you can use this same information for the principal also many colleges are going to give the principal as the separate and they are going to give the different different points and confusing points to the students but uh, hopefully i have given the good information and if you have any doubts in or the questions to rise and any other experiments to be discussed from us please come with the new topics and uh, suggest us so that we can give you the uh, good slides and explanation and i hope that i have made you happy with this explanation and uh, help us by subscribing and uh, liking our videos and sharing our videos with your friends and uh, i hope i have given the complete information thank you very much thank you for joining the learners big